friend, it's Pat Sloan here. We are on the final week of pumpkins, although my little pumpkins I'm gonna still be working on. Of course, I'll have to get this quilt and show you, but we're gonna you know, do the, do the sashing and I'm going to walk through what I finally decided to do with the little pumpkins. But before that, it is, oh wait, let me get it. It is, today is the Bluebird of Happiness. Bluebird of Happiness Day, oh yes. So I did this quilt a while back. Yes, it needs binding, but it is trimmed. It is trimmed. And so this is, was, are they straight up? Yeah, the birds. The birds are from a Riley Blake pattern that it's a free pattern. So I'll link it to you uh, in the description box below and at my website today. And I made this with my uh, bird song fabric. And look at the pretty quilting. I think my friend Judy did this quilting, but I can't remember now, but I think it was Judy who did it. And then the back is from Birdsong. I need to get the binding on this. This has got to be a priority. But also, one of our friends sent me this a while back. The glass of bluebird. Apparently, these were made, a company made these bluebirds. That's pretty much all they made. They made different sizes of them. And they were quite famous company. They are closed now. But my friend, uh, one of our friends here at uh, in the community sent this to me a couple years ago. And I treasure it. It is sitting on my computer right in front of me every day. My grandma's fra fra my grandma na na Nana's favorite saying was a bluebird of happiness. She talks about the bluebird of happiness. So, oh, so sweet. The other two things today are, uh, it's bingo day. So if you have a bingo quilt, show it, show it. Gotta see a bingo quilt. I know there are bingo quilts out there. <laughs> And it's one hit wonder day, which I always think of as a one hit wonder is generally a band, you know, that has like one or two mega big songs and that's it. <laughs> it's like they either disband or you know, they never get another big song. Uh, but there's also a one block wonder, which is a quilt. Uh, so if you have a one block wonder that's done or top or progress, whatever, share that in the group today over at Quilt Along with Pat Sloan. So I want to talk about something else before we go to the pumpkins because I have the walking foot on the baby lock here, my baby lock Solaris Vision. The walking foot is on here. And I, uh, I, I, I want to just talk about channel quilting. So let's go do that first. So before we talk about this channel quilting and matchbox, uh, matchbox, <laughs> matchstick, like really skinny, uh, straight line quilting. Let me just show you what I got in the mail. And this is from Lori in California. Such a pretty card. Look at this. And this is by uh, Diane Phelan, who does watercolors. Uh, Quilts for Sale is the name of that picture of hers that she painted. Isn't that beautiful? Ah, uh, and then she sent me a, sent me a yummy Starbucks Mwah! and, and some cute <laughs> sassy little cards. Was it? I might look like I'm by listening to you, but in my head, I'm sewing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have just done that the other day. Don't tell anybody, but it was with, with Mr. Greg. <laughs> he was telling me something about radios and I was like, you know, sewing in my head. Uh, I like to party and by party, I mean, stay home and sew. <laughs> These are such cute little cards. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's talk let's talk about this quilting. So what happens is that at the um, Virginia Quilt Museum, there was an exhibit on one of the floors that had a lot of contemporary quilts and they had a lot of this very narrow matchstick quilting. And so here's a, here's a picture of it. This is what, uh, uh, just a, a close up of one of the quilts that was in the exhibit. So you can see they're just super, super narrow channel quilting, you know, really tight. So you may have done straight line quilting and that's like not a grid. This is talking just, you know, top to bottom uh, is how it's generally referenced. You're not like, and you can, people do parts and there's variations, but the basics are, you know, straight line. It's, it's not a grid. If you see the grid, that's not channel quilting. That's a grid quilting. Uh, and I've seen that sometimes um, people have it. It's straight line quilting is also just any direction, but channel is like, you know, like a boat channel or, you know, whatever. Uh, what did Suzanne, our ambassador, called it pretzel sticks. <laughs> so it's like, like the width of a pretzel stick. Uh, so here is what I did. I decided this quilt is not too big and it would be a great one to do some of this on. And I was experimenting and experiencing some things that I wanted to learn a little bit more about how to avoid. And so I thought I would share it with you. 
so here at the at the in the sashing, I've got that uh, matchstick quilting going. Can you can see it, right? Yeah, you can see it. So see where it's the tightest, and then you can see next to it, it's not quite as tight, and then it's a little uh, as it goes over here. Um, you know, and it's harder on the prints. You can see. Let me put it down here. You can see it on the white a whole lot better, which is good and not so good, because when things are not so good. Uh, the white is going to show every little bit of every little shadow. So I have two friends, Krista Watson and Amy Friend, who both are people who do a lot of this quilting and teach it a lot. And so when you teach something like this a lot, you run into every kind of issue because you have students and the students are doing things on their machines. And so they have a lot of experience, um, just like I have a ton from machine applique because I taught a lot of people. So I got a chance to see their machines, see their issues, see their problems, and build this whole um, toolbox of knowledge. And they have that for this type of quilting. So here is the tiny little matchstick, and I could go, I could go even closer. Well, I mean, I can go closer to show you, but I could go closer in between. Sometimes people will actually stitch, you know, they'll stitch even closer, even closer. Now there's, um, you know, you can mark these lines. You can just use the edge of your presser foot if you're walking foot, but I've got a walking foot on. I have a new needle, clean the machine. I have thin batting, not very thick, and I spray basted and the walking foot, if I didn't say that already. Walking foot, walking foot, walking foot. So what happened is I was kind of, I was working on this up here at this top part. And, uh, cause I started here and I'm moving this way. The other thing you would do is with this type of quilting, even though you may hear somebody tell you otherwise, don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. You will do top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom. You don't change directions. If you change directions, you will have puckering. If you do this top to bottom, then you don't have the pulling or the puckering. But I was getting just a little bit in this area in here uh, where it's wider. As I did, as I was splitting it, splitting it, splitting it, then it flattens that out. Like if I will split this, it'll flatten that out, split that, it'll flatten it out. But you could see just a little bit here. Now, one of the things they told me is that, first of all, the white, like I just said a moment ago, the white is going to show all kinds of shadows and, 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 and you know, any kind of movement of your fabric. Because remember, your fabric is not a piece of glass or a piece of wood. It is a fiber that bends and, you know, it has, it's pliable. And so all of that is going to play into what's going on. Um, but I thought I should be able to do better than this. And so what they suggested, uh, one, okay, for what they suggested with what I have is to um, take a little pressure, have a little less pressure on my presser foot, which I did. So I, I reduced the pressure of the presser foot uh, for the walking foot. And then I elongated my stitch, just one stitch, one stitch longer than what I do for regular piecing. And that smoothed it out. It's, it smoothed it out. You can see it down here, uh, you know, on the, whoops, trying to pull that out. So down here, there's a little bit more, like you can see a little bit more texture here, but here it is pretty flat. It is really nice and flat on those ones where I, I um, made the changes. But here I can see that, see the marks? You can see like, like you know, I would call it like a pull or um, just a, you know, it's just got some extra texture, texture that I didn't want because you could leave your channel quilting like this. I think this is what, um, <laughs> I think this is what Suzanne calls pretzel sticks because it's about a finger width. And so it's about a half an inch here. Uh, cause I measured it when I was talking to my friends. Um, now what do you do if you're doing this sort of match stick quilting, like here, you want to do these channels the whole way out, you know, channel, 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 channel like this. And then you come and split it. You split down the center and then you split down the center again. This kind of quilting takes forever to do forever. It takes a really long time because you've got to do all the lines once and then you're splitting them. So you will do them all like again, and then you will split them again 
and again and again. So you're doing like across the same number. It's a lot. It's a lot. But it's kind of fun and it's relaxing. Um, it might be a little bit zen-like. It might be what a lot of people really feel when they enjoy sitting and doing a lot of hand quilting where it's just a very rhythmic, um, gentle way to sew. Uh, you're not, you're just kind of staying in line. Now I am not marking mine at all. I'm just using the edge of the presser foot. And so that does mean it's not going to be 100% straight. I'm totally fine with that. What happens, and I've read this in books and seen it, and these gals told me, is that as you're splitting them, those sort of imperfections just kind of um, blend in and become part of the whole of the whole process. So I'm going to go and get the, going to pull the other camera and put it here close. I'm going to try to hold it with one hand because I can't set it down because the quilt's in the way and I'm not going to get the tripod out for it. It's just too much of a pain for showing you something for 30 seconds to get the tripod out. So I'm just going to hold it with my hand, but I'm going to go ahead and split down one of those channels and show you what that looks like. So what I'm doing is I am in the middle between here, you know, here's the two lines. So I'm just stitching straight down the middle and I am eyeballing that. I'm kind of looking at where are the lines uh, on my foot, you know, like where are the two channels that I'm sewing between so I can kind of see where they are. And it is just, you know, just doing this. Let me get to the white area here where you can actually see like so much better. Okay, hold on. All right, so I crossed this window. Whoops, across the window there. So I'm just sewing right down that channel. And let's look in the back. So now you can see, you see back here? Okay, I gotta do more. So here is the channel I just split. So I just split that. And then to get really good matchstick, I will split those again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go the whole way down and I'll come back up at the top and I'll split one of these. So to split this, what I'm doing is just coming between the skinnier lines, just coming right down the center. And I am just eyeballing that right down the center. And it is, you know, you don't have to really even keep that great a track because you're just, you don't have a lot of wiggle room there. You can see where you're going. If you have an open toe, I have an open toe um, walking foot somewhere. I should probably get that out and put it on so I have a little bit better visibility. So let me just do a little bit more here. Let me just do it down to here. I'm just going to try to hold the camera. I hope it don't go out of view. I'm trying to watch what I'm doing. Keep the stuff in view. Come through this window. Okay, let me just look at the back. So here it is split into the more narrow channel, which is also what I have here, is these more narrow channels. And that's as narrow as I'm going to go on this one. And uh, you could be kind of funky, you wouldn't have to do it everywhere, but I think I'm going to just do the whole thing. I'm gonna go in all in on this one, which means it'll take a little bit longer. I'll have to maybe do a little bit every night um, and just, you know, split, split through here. So it's like doing multiple rows across. And then there's, there's more of them. As you split, you're, you're uh, multiplying how many you have to do. So it will take quite a while, but I think it'll be really cool. Another couple of tips I got from my friends, of course, was to do a sample. And I actually recommend you do this sample with the same fabrics that you're going to use. My little sample here is on a slightly different thickness of fabric because you'll notice like, quilting cottons there are some slight differences and so this one is a little bit stiffer firmer than what I'm working with today on this house quilt and so it acts differently and so I would want to make a sample with the same fabric and the other thing is that they preferred Amy and Krista both prefer to use 100% cotton because the cotton will grip even though this is an 80-20 that I'm using. They said that 20% poly that's in there could just be causing it to be a little less grip plus the quilting on the white which shows every little thing. Um, so that was a, that's what I'm going to do next time. For the next one I do with matchstick or even channel quilting I am going to use 100% cotton and I think Krista said 100% wool or a wool cotton blend but to get the poly out of the batting if you're going to do this type of quilting with the channels or the matchstick. 
Um, so there, there. I hope that that was an interesting. Let me know in the comments here at YouTube, to, you know, or at Facebook. You know, but tell me whether you've tried this, whether you thought this was interesting, whether you, um, you know, you learned something. You know, if you might try it. I mean, just tell me whatever you're thinking about it. Um, I'm really excited to finish it and have one done with all the little skinny strips because I just think it looks so cool. <laughs> very, very cool. Uh, so let's go on and work on pumpkins now. So for the main pumpkin quilt that I'm doing, which is, here's a, here's a picture. I actually, uh, back when I bought the Jolly Bars, they had some kits. So I had bought the kit and that means that I got binding, love the stripe, love the stripe and backing. So I've got the backing. That's already, I have to piece it, I think. So I have that and I have the sashings and so when I do the wrap up, I'll have sewn it and showed you that. <laughs> that's, that's part of the video making. I'll go and put those sashings on there. <laughs> that's, I gotta take that walking foot off though, before I do that. Cause I don't like to piece with the walking foot. I know some people do, they really enjoy it, but I dislike it. I like my regular foot for, for that. So on the minis, remember I talked about yesterday, well not yesterday, but <laughs> I think Friday's video about, uh, it's sort of reducing down the patchwork involved with those those pumpkins because they let me see the yeah I think you can see it on this drawing so you can see on the drawing there where there's um, checkerboards and then here there's strips horizontal and then there's strips like vertical and I thought you know well maybe I would just do I was saying like a four patch because this one has some four patch ones like that second one in on the top row. But I've changed my mind totally. They're all just going to be solids. <laughs> it's like, that's it. Just solid pumpkins. I'm happy with that because it's so cute and they're very small. And I just don't want to put that much detail in. I'm just not interested in that. So that means the pumpkin fabric. Here is what I have for the white pumpkins. And let's take a closer look because I went ahead and laid them out kind of, you know, how they will be. Here is, you know, I've got, I, you know, oh, there should be four across. So I've got to repeat. What am I thinking? I was thinking three by three. It's like four by four by four. So I will have to repeat. But just to get it started, I have got them, you know, laid out. And these are nine different fabrics. And so I will repeat some of them. But I went ahead and decided to add in the ones with the words. And what I'll do is fussy cut this so it has like there's leaves, um, a pecan pie, do you see that? Maple leaves. So I will fussy cut. And um, cut. I'm going to cut all these pumpkins and then I'll show you. So I'm just going to cut the squares. Just going to cut the, the um, 16 squares. There'll be some repeats. And then we'll take a look at the layout of them because, um, you know, I they'll be squatty and tall, squatty and tall. Well, you can't see that, can you? You know, so there's horse, you know, there's shorter ones and taller ones. Okay, to do 16, I'm going to do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, just one, 16, just one. So that's, that's the number I'm going to cut. And the pumpkins are the same size. They're just flipped. The short ones are flipped and the tall ones have the, the skinny going up and down. And so I can do that. So here they are laid out color wise and they will be rotated because they're all the same size. So, you know, the squatty ones will be to the side and then the tall will come and they'll alternate every other. And then here are all the other parts. So I will organize that and be able to sew it as I go along during the week. Here it is. The whole top, let me stand as far back as I can, all the way back. Here it is, here it is. Oh, so excited, so excited. I know that with this pumpkin uh, quilt along, a lot of you are doing different patterns. There are a lot of different patterns going on out there. And so I can't wait to see some more finishes from some of you. And I'm sure it'll roll into next month, into October, because I will be working on my little pumpkins, which I've got, here's one of the boards separated. And I've got this one uh, with all the cornerstones on it. So you can see all the, I just, you know, put the fabrics there. <gasps> okay. And if you enjoyed hearing a bit about the column quilting, 
and matchstick quilting and some notes on that you know tips on that let me know what you thought also I'm linking down below to my friend Amy friends website and to my friend Krista Watson's website and if any of you had done the finishing school Krista was one of the instructors there uh, so you might want to check out their websites and they both teach uh, so and they do patterns and books so you want to see all the things that they have Krista is also a better text fabric designer uh, so there you go you can go out and check out their work since they are really knowledgeable and have a, a lot of cool cool stuff for you to check out okay all right my friend <gasps> pumpkin day oh and then you're going to show me your bingo quilts and your uh, what are we doing the one block wonders all right i love you Mwah. thank you for being here in the sun zone i will see you online